Today we're going to have a look at surface editing, creating customized textures and how to make sure that they're working well in our Archicad model. Here we have a surface, which is a custom-made surface, RMD Brick Old, and I've mapped it on this wall. Now if we zoom right in, and of course we're in OpenGL view at the moment, we see that of course that it is a pixelated view. Now when we're creating a surface or texture, we need to be very aware of at what level of detail will we see this? Or how far away from our model will we be viewing this? At this sort of view, the brick looks fine and it, we don't see any pixelization and it doesn't look unreal, but the closer we get, the more we realize that it is fake. Now we therefore have to find a balance between creating a file that's very, very large, a high textured image, or creating something that works at a distance because if we're looking at something from a distance, it's spanning a greater area. And we need to try to get a non-repeatable pattern that's balanced, but also not so large that it makes our file render very, very slowly. The other issue that we have with this file is that we see that it is seamed, or it's not seamless, if you like. Another way of calling that is tiling. And we note that we have a, a brick joint here, but it's not quite working. The texture, the file, isn't being natural, it looks fake, it looks artificial. How do we fix that? The first thing we need to do is to re-view our model, not just in the OpenGL, but to render it. Because when we're using CineRender, until we either create a preview or the final projection, we won't know whether it's right or not. I'm going to go into my photo render settings, and I'll just quickly preview. Now we see that it's too small here to see if it's working or not, but the real reason why I'm doing this is just making sure there's enough light. If it looks a bit too washed out, I'm just going to reduce. This isn't good ways to set lights. I'm just using very, very fast settings at the moment to make sure it's working in order to edit my textures. All right, so now let's zoom in a bit more. So it's filling up our page in essence and render that. Okay, so we see that even when it's photo rendered, we still have this seam in our wall. It's not working perfectly. Now this is a fairly difficult texture because it's a brick wall, which means it's quite easy to note when something's not right. We have to match up our horizontals and verticals and make sure that it's working. So this is a texture. If you're opening up Archihead, you might not know what that means. So options, sorry, let's first do this cleverly. Hold down Alt, click left click, that's going to pick up the settings, option, element attributes, surfaces, it's going to take me to my surface, RMD brick old, and I'm need, needing to find what that is. I could do this a few different ways. I'm going to use internal engine. Here I can see that my the name of this is called RMD old brick. If I'm not sure where that is, I can go search, and it's usually going to show me roughly where it is. That's under in this case, a folder called Textures. It's in a subfolder called Bricks, and it's called RMD Old Brick. So if you don't know where it is, that's a good way of searching to find out. Now to edit this, I need to go to that folder. Thankfully, I know where that is. Therefore, for you, if you're creating, if you're editing textures, it's very important that you save them in places that you know where to find them. That they're going to stay on your computer, they're not going to move, and that you can manage them. File management is a massive part of working in any program, particularly Archicad. I'm going to find that brick. I think it was this one. Yep, RMD old bricks. I have a few different things called old bricks. And I'm going to open it now in Photoshop. Open with Photoshop. Now, this is where it gets a bit confusing, because when we look at this picture, this picture looks a bit perfect, doesn't it? If we zoom in, we see that there is no problem with mapping, or with tiling, as we call it. So where's the problem? Here's a trick with Photoshop. Filter, other, Offset. Now, if you ever played the game called Snake, maybe on your old Nokia phone, you'll understand what this is about. I can offset the center of my view, which means we're not 
mirroring it. We're not rotating it. What we're doing is shifting the boundaries. We're taking the part that was the left-hand side and moving it across the page. So the part that's on the right-hand side now ends up on the left. We're taking the part that's on the top, shifting it up, so it scrolls through and it now comes through the bottom. So it's moving the edge and I can define that just with numbers or I can define it graphically. So you see that as I'm horizontally dragging this around, you see that we now have an edge, don't we? A very yucky edge, if you like. And this is because it was the edges, the left and right hand side of this texture. It wasn't perfect. I can also do the same thing in the vertical manner. Now I'm not sure if this texture has a vertical seam. I think the vertical seam is a lot better, but the horizontal seam is horrible. All right, so once I'm happy that there is no vertical seam, what I tend to want to do is to put that horizontal seam in the middle of my page, and then I can start to edit it. Now there's multiple different ways to edit this. I want to edit the original file because obviously the original file is wrong. If I wasn't sure, I'd definitely create a duplicate. And if I'm very, very clever, I'm going to at least create a new layer. Layer, new, layer via copy. And then I can turn the other one off if necessary, which means at the end of the day, if I do something very, very wrong, I can always undo or delete this layer and go back to my original. Well, I'm not perfect at Photoshop, but I know a few tricks. Okay, so how do we make this work? There's lots of different tools in Photoshop that would allow us to do this. Let's have a look at some of them. We have our spot healing brush tool. Make this a bit bigger. And I'm going to draw a, a smudge over the area that's wrong. Let's see what happens. Where's that seam gone? <laughs> so the spot healing brush tool is, is a very useful tool because it looks at what's around on both sides and it tries to make it fit. So mostly really good, except, what did I say before, the problem with bricks is they're a bit hard. Because with a brick wall, it's not just about the edge blending together, it's about the consistency of scale. So now we've got a brick that's far too big. And here as well, this brick's far too big. Let's just continue this just so you can see what I'm doing. I might zoom out just so we do the whole thing in one go. Back to the spot healing brush tool, fix it up. And it's not too bad. It looks pretty good. It's, it's a bit rustic. And if I was using something that was more geometric, it would show up more. But it mostly works. In this case, it doesn't work well enough. So I'm going to press Control alt z or in my case, Command alt z because I'm working on a Mac. And we're going to look at some other ways of fixing it. Now, what do we need to be aware of? We want to try to have a consistency of a length of a brick. And that's a bit of an issue because it's already not working very well. If this was a lot more of a, a natural brick bonded wall, we could find where that line is. What do I mean by that? I'm going to use my rulers. If they're not turned on already, you want to go to View, Rulers. They'll disappear now. I'll turn them back on again. And what our rulers allow us to do is to drag from the side, holding left click down, drag across a line to use as a guide. Now what I'm going to try to do here is find a point on my page where I'm matching up lots of mortar joints. You see that it works for some of them. Matched up, matched up, matched up. But then the rest don't match up. One matches up here, this one's close. Again, so on a very well bonded brick wall, this would be a lot easier to do and therefore it would be more important to do. Because this is an old brick wall and these bricks aren't exactly perfect, it's not quite as important. If we move this line, this ruler, to where our issue is, to where our seam is, we see that sometimes we end up with a brick, so we've got a bit of a mortar here, so we've got almost a bit of mortar here, we've got almost a bit of mortar here. It's not a very good bond, but I'm not sure that I'm necessarily going to find a better one. So I'm going to move it across a bit. I'm just going to try a few locations and see if it's giving me better results. This one's not bad. So we've got a half a brick here. Full brick, half brick, full brick, sort of a half brick, half brick, up further. It's not fantastic. It's not terrible, but it's also not brilliant. 
So we could crop this image to try to make it work. Now it's not very good to try to do this while it's offset. It's better to do this before you offset it. It's harder to crop it when it's in this orientation. Because I don't think I'm going to make this work very well, what I'm going to do is a little bit of hard work. I'm going to try to make this work like it should. How do I fix this? There's lots of different ways, but the first thing I, I might do, I'm still going to use that spot healing brush, but rather than doing it on such a very large area, I'm going to reduce the size, and I'm going to, in this case, reduce the hardness down as well. Now if I try to spot heal this individually, there's less of a sample so it's not quite sure what I'm trying to do. So that's still not working. So how do I fix this? If I'm confident with how it works, the next tool that I'm going to use is called my clone stamp tool. Now what my clone stamp tool does on a very small scale is picks up settings, picks up colors, but not just a color, but it picks up a pattern in this case. And then it's going to allow me to draw or paste that pattern onto different areas. So Alt to pick it up, and then left click essentially to, to paste or redraw. Now I have to be careful about how I do this so it works. But if I do this carefully, it's a bit slow. I, I can also use other bricks. I don't need to use that exact same brick that I'm currently sitting on. But for a very natural sort of a wall that we don't want to be undo if you make edit, if you make mistakes, obviously. For a very natural sort of a wall, we could use this technique. Now this is very slow and, and painstaking, so we don't have to go to this level of detail. What we could do is do what we did before. You see that this is now looking a lot better, but it was a lot slower, wasn't it? So we could use our spot healing brush tool, increase the size of it again, fix this whole area, let's just make it a bit harder, and then if I have issues with what we've done, if there's any that stand out as really bad, really wrong, which is what's happening here, then I can edit these ones individually. Sorry, wrong button. So in this case, what am I going to do? I'm going to create a mortar joint. So I'm going to find a mortar joint that I like using my option here, pick this up, and I'm going to draw the mortar joint in where I think that should go. I think I need another one as well, so let's find another appropriate colour. It's often best to try to get a sample from as far away as possible. That'll allow it to look as real as possible. Pick up this one and then draw this in here. Sorry, again, wrong button. Control D. Halt to pick up my sample position and then let's draw this. So this texture isn't perfect and you could see that we could spend a lot of time on here but now we've gotten rid of that sampling issue. We've gotten rid of that line and if I go back to filter other offset I can now horizontally move this along and we don't see any edge. We don't see a discrepancy in how that texture works. So this is a little bit of Photoshop editing. This um, texture wasn't bad to begin with. I can look later at a texture that's a lot more problematic and how we'd have to edit that in Photoshop. But you have to find, again, a, a line of how much work are you willing to do. There's so many different pictures available on the internet or even photos that you can take that there's not a lot of point editing something for half a day if you could just find a better one to begin with. 
and save yourself all that trouble. Don't want to do that, thank you, cancel. All right, so let's take this back into photo, uh, back into Archicad and what's, look, look what's going on. You'll note that when we're back in Archicad, this hasn't changed. It's still wrong, isn't it? That's because we need to reload our library. Until we reload the file, it's not going to update. And this is the real advantage or importance of using a linked library as opposed to an embedded library. If we had embedded this library, then it wouldn't update or wouldn't update properly. Option, element attributes. Sorry, I'll we'll do it that way. I'm gonna go file, libraries, library manager. This green button, refresh, reload. Okay. Let's go out of the 3D window. Let's go to our surface. RMD brick old. See how that's looking? It's looking a bit better to me. Let's give this a render and see if it's fixed up or see if it's still having the same problem. Just going to go back to this and make sure it actually did work. I sincerely hope so. <laughs> I didn't save the file. All right. In Archicad, what we'd need to do once we save the file, which I don't know how that didn't happen, is that we'd need to reload and then it would automatically fix the file. Just to show you what that should look like in a really, really silly world. Let's draw this. Where's a pen? There we go. We can see now in the texture that's updated. Let's render this. There we go. So yeah, I should save my file better clearly after doing all that work. But that's how we make changes in Photoshop and then update them or make sure that they are reflected in our Archicad file.